All right, this is my daily update for my build and public log. It's January 30th, 2025. I can't believe the month is almost over. It flew by. Feels feels like it's been three months. <laughs> I have a good update for today. I, uh, I talked yesterday about how I'm going to it, not just build AI agents, in a, like a framework for building agents, but instead I'm going to actually, uh, build agents on a service that I'm going to provide that I'm going to build and provide to run said agents. My intention before, like I said yesterday was to build agents and just you, you pay and you get the code. But now instead I'm going to like keep that code, like obviously on the server and you're going to make. API for now at the beginning, you're going to make API requests or calls to the API to run the agent you want, and then you're going to get a response. So what what have I done the last 24 hours or so? I thought a lot about the architecture and how I, how I want to build this. Um, I already started building pieces of this, so so I came up with this diagram. This is uh, getting my vision down onto quote unquote paper. Um, so I'll walk through this in a second, but first I want to take a step back and talk about number one, this is a lot. This is going to take a while to get to. I think I could build a basic version pretty quickly, but like real basic. Um, when it comes to architecture. Now, let me let me be very clear. I'm not a quote unquote architect. I am just a senior software engineer who's who's been around the block and trying to do things as best as possible, okay? So, if you really 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 want deep system design knowledge, probably go to a YouTube channel where you know, that's, that's what they do. Cause there are some excellent, excellent ones out there. Um, I follow along, uh, with a few people who have excellent channels for this stuff, but I, I know well enough when things are being done poorly. <laughs> so let, let's put it that way. So here is, uh, a great, great repo. I found that explains in this is a perfect, this is exactly what I mean. Go find an, if you want to learn more about this stuff, go find the experts who, who this is their thing. And I'm not going to go deep into this document, but I will share it in the, in the description below. But this is the perfect example of uh, doing things, in my opinion, the right way. So this, this is, uh, Again, this will be like a quick, quick review and summary of this, but uh, this is best practices for building modern architecture for the for how the front end should talk to the back end. So system design patterns. Uh, best practices, tools, and guidelines for back end development. So I, I love that this kind of goes over how I approach architecture. Um, this whole repo and, do and document this readme, this deserves its own video, like, like a big long video too. Um, but I highly, if you're into, if you're into uh, software engineering, if you are into, you know, system design architecture of how to build complex systems, I, I recommend giving this a read. Um, but he calls it domain driven, uh, hexagon. There's a great, great graphic here. Um, now I'm building a very simple app, a backend, and there'll be a front end too. I'm building a very simple app at first, but it probably will get complex if I'm even remotely successful with this. So this is said far better than I could say it here to you of, of how I envision uh, building, building a, a secure, robust, scalable system. Um, so I'm just going to point out a few things that, that caught my eye that if you take anything from anything from the videos that I'm making, please, 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 please listen to what I'm about to say right here. A few 
advice is to avoid coupling. This this really caught my eye when I, when I was going through this document. Try not to create dependencies between modules or use cases. Instead, move shared logic into a separate files, into separate files, and make both depend on that instead of depending on each other. Modules can cooperate through a mediator or public facade, hiding all private internals of the module to avoid its misuse and giving public access only to certain pieces of functionality that are meant to be public. Please, please, please. I wish all software did that. Alternatively, modules can communicate with each other by using messages. For example, you can send commands using a commands bus or subscribe to events that other modules emit. You gotta be careful with that one though. I I wish, like I said, all software was written that way. I have worked at many places that had large code bases that did not do that. And it, it does not go well. And he talks about this, about uh, building spaghetti code. Really, really good stuff here. Uh, so with with this in mind, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll share this in the description. This is my attempt at, at trying to architect uh, a simple web app that handles a lot of long running asynchronous tasks for AI agents. I, I love starting simple first and uh, ignore, I, it's so easy to, um, to think what if there's like, you know, 1,000 users making requests and running all these agents, premature optimization. It's true what they say. Uh, uh, resist the temptation to to dream and and start planning for that. I I have a I struggle with that because I'm a dreamer. Uh, I like to dream up things, and I you know I, I sit here and I think, oh, what if there's a thousand users? You know, I'm guilty of this, but you got to resist the temptation. Start simple, start small, and build, but make the right architectural decisions up front don't like what i just pointed out about modules you, you gotta kind of build things correctly from the beginning without the premature optimizations you, you can't just you know hack together whatever garbage so let's go over this somebody makes a request hey go run go run this uh this agent, the one I've been building is scheduling events. That's basically done, by the way. You know, a sentence. So uh, the user saying, hey, schedule a meeting uh, tomorrow at 3 p.m. with Sally. Okay, so this will go to um, the API layer. There'll be validation. Um, ideally, there is strict schema validation. So if somebody sends like some something totally weird and not right, obviously you'll return uh, an immediate uh, response saying, "Hey, something you know something isn't right with uh, appropriate errors." So you need to validate, you know, basically the schema and make sure that oh yeah, this looks like a legit request. Then you validate the uh, the API key. So you'll obviously need an API key validate and find that user information is it correct like are they are they a legit user uh if so do they do they have credits to to do this or you know is their account valid you know all, all that basic simple validation that you can imagine then it gets to uh this part where it creates a queue so think about it there is these long running tasks. So the, one of the one of the weird things about the AI stuff is typically when you make an API call, it's like really fast. It's like, give me this data. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, here's a bunch of data. Uh, and then you have s fancy stuff like GraphQL where you explicitly say like, I want this data. I don't want all the data. I like selectively want you to 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 you know crunch the data on the back end. And return only this piece. And traditionally, uh, API calls were fast. Like maybe a slow backend would be like 15 seconds or something crazy. But not the time that you see with LLMs now. Like the the it, it's insanity. A lot of software doesn't support it. Like 
the like deep seek r1 for for example even in cursor which is built to use llms and make those calls just times out because it's so slow no software is built to wait minutes like a lot of software is not used to api calls taking so drastically long so you have to queue things all the requests come in and you got to put them in a queue because i mean it's just you, you, everything will time out you can't just like Stand by and wait, you know, one minute for the response. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. RESTful APIs, uh, you can't do it that way. I'll get to that, though. So a job is created. Uh, it goes Obviously, you've got to record that into the database because, you know, you, you need... There's this idea of a queue, and then you have workers that work in parallel, watches that queue, and then execute, and it runs that runs the task. So obviously, it goes into the database, and then uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to use what's called trigger.dev. This is a pretty cool. I, I I made a video talking about this in another video. This is a pretty cool library i don't know how to call it it's kind of their own platform where they run them for you but i want to run it myself because i i think uh that could get pretty pricey and i just want to control the whole stack for now so it adds the job to trigger.dev and then that goes and runs the agent now this agent who knows how long it's going to take it could be really fast and take like three seconds or it could take 30 minutes. Who knows? Like you, that, I'm building this to be flexible for, you know, long, long, long running agents where what if you're like, go scour the internet and find me this information and compile a report, which is the next agent I want to build, by the way. It might take like 30 minutes. I don't know. We'll see. So it goes in the background and it runs that task. So that code is completely isolated it doesn't depend on any of this architecture there's this co core code for the agents that the framework i've been working on will live so that core code that runs the agents is only responsible and only cares about running the agent collecting the met the the metrics and doing all of that good stuff it is not caring whatsoever about that outer layer of of this doesn't care where it lives doesn't care about anything just that singular focus let me go run this agent let me go collect them the the metrics and that module will be responsible for doing whatever with the metrics obviously it processes and then it gets the result or errors you know <laughs> obviously there could be errors ideally there's not errors and once it has the results it obviously saves it to the database things like the, the the metrics hey this was successful um oh hey it, it took this long hey the cost was this hey i had to retry a couple times something went wrong but i got the solution and think about it like i said what if this is a task that takes five minutes you don't want to sit around it's better just to uh have it in and out so via a webhook so you'll be able to pass in a webhook with your request saying on success, if this agent is successful, send that data back here. Okay. And if it fails, tell me here as well. This is very powerful and very common now for uh, real complex AI workflows. Tools like NADN rely heavily on that. I talk about that tool a lot. Uh, that's all webhooks are just passing around data from one thing to another via webhooks. So, boom. The data and the response from the agent goes back to the client who's sitting there waiting for the inbound. Or alternatively, you will get a response. So when you make that call, when that call comes in, you immediately will get a response back saying, all right, you're, you're, we got your request. You'll be able to pull that. So let's say you're, let's say you, you want to not just wait for the data to come, you pull and okay, here's your ID, go pull and wait for the data there. And when the data is finally available, if there's no webhook, or maybe you are doing both, send the data to the webhook and send the data back to that polling. That's it, folks. That's 
I, I know that might be very simple for some people. Uh, I imagine uh, for my fellow singer engineers, this is all pretty straightforward. Uh, no nonsense stuff. But uh, that's the plan. That's what I'm working on building. And I started working on this. <laughs> starting starting small. So I'm going to try to move really fast here because I want a simple version up uh, by the end of this weekend that I'm actually calling from my product, AI chat email. This piece, I'm, I'm working on this right now. And I'm having a lot of trouble with this piece. Not surprising. That piece is... I'm struggling how to get that working locally. So uh, I, I, actually, I actually have this up on my server now. But I'm a little bit lost how to mimic that locally. And I hope that's helpful. If this is helpful, please, please, please subscribe. And leave a comment saying system design. Please, system design. That's That helps the algorithm so much. And let me know if this is helpful. Or if I'm doing something wrong and retarded, please, God, let me know. Because sometimes I get so tunnel vision, I, I, I start making bad decisions until I take a step back and think it through. And, ah, uh, okay, let me, let me reevaluate. Uh, yeah, so that's my update for today. And now on to my random story of the day. It'll be a quick one. It's kind of a weird one. So I, I went for a walk before this call. I go for these long walks in nature because, goddamn, thinking about this shit all day just makes your brain melt, or at least it makes my brain melt. So I need to step away and, and get air and exercise and nature. And the weather's been really great here lately, like sunny and warm. I wear a T-shirt out. In the middle of winter, I'm wearing a T-shirt. Welcome to California. So I was walking on my little trail I go down, and I heard a woodpecker. Uh, you know, da, 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 in the tree. And when I walked up to the tree, wherever it was, it stopped. They, they're, they're weird, weird, weird creatures. And I remember one time uh, I was walking in the woods outside of Portland, Oregon. I was by myself and I was walking down this trail. And out of the corner of my eye, I see something. I look and there's this weird, wacky little woodpecker. And this thing was so strange this creature this this <laughs> he he looked at me very oddly and was like and he like awkwardly like moved around the tree and i kind of like looked to the side looked at him what like what the hell are you doing and then he poked his head out behind the tree like you know like what are you doing human and then we kind of played this game of like looking at each other like i would look like this and, you know, go away, and then he would pe peek his head around the corner. Really fucking weird. This was weird. I was like, no one's here to see this. And, you know, I went the other side of the tree, and then he goes around, and he peeks his head around the tree and looks at me. Very odd behavior. I've never seen an animal act like this. It was so strange. Uh, we played this little game for a few minutes, and he was just checking me out, playing a little game with me. It's very bizarre. I swear, a true story. Uh... And then I just kind of laughed at him and said, you're, you're, you're a strange, strange little bird. Uh, and then I continued down the trail and continued walking. So they're pretty funny, weird creatures, the, the woodpeckers. And it must be the season for them or something, because my sister is uh, north of here in a really rural area. Outside her window, there's deers and quails. And she got a good picture of a woodpecker there. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, those things are can be so annoying and weird. Um, so it's pretty cool. I, I, I'm not a huge bird person, but they're, they're kind of funny animals. So, uh, but not fun if you have one outside your window, that's for sure. Because they are loud. All right, that's all I got for today. Hope this is helpful. See you tomorrow.